Today we're going to review the S Boston hand warmer which is more or less the Cadillac of the hand warmer world and uh, in order to get some benchmarks we'll try doing some comparisons to performance uh, as opposed to something like a Zippo and maybe we'll even throw in some Chinese hand warmers for good measure. So I thought I'd get this done before she who must be obeyed gets home even though she's banned me from the dining room table. I've now moved to this nice studio in Hollywood. Spielberg will be coming in later to help me with this video. So this is the S Boston and it stands apart from some of the others in that it has a few extra features. You're probably already aware of some of those if you've already started to look for S Boston on YouTube. Uh, it has the electronic igniter, it has the ability to block off the reservoir with a rubber cap and thus preserve the fuel that's in there because we all know how expensive a nap that is, especially when you're a homeless person like I am. So <clears throat> you uh, don't really get a lot of advantage out of preserving your fuel in there because this reservoir max load is 15 cc's or 15 ml and that'll give you 15 hours if you stop it after seven hours it doesn't mean you're gonna need to add exactly seven ml and the problem being is if you overfill and you contaminate your catalyst you're damaging your catalyst so <clears throat> I prefer to run all my hand warmers down so I know they're empty so that is a minor inconvenience however you can for example fill your hand warmer the night before you head out on your ski or fishing trip and then cap it with the rubber side and in the morning then you haven't had evaporation happening all night then you just take it apart and flip it and then you can fire it up <coughs> so it's not a superfluous advantage to having that and there are some benefits. What I'm going to do is fill this up with 15 mils of naphtha and then I'm going to fire it up and do a temperature test and then we'll see if it compares to the claims that it gets hotter than the Zippos or the Chinese ones and then we'll go from there. After you've filled your hand warmers it's best to let them stand at room temperature to warm up before you light them or warm them up in your pocket if you're outside before you light them. Keep them in an upright position so liquid fuel can't go into your catalyst and contaminate it. And uh, here I'm filling. This is one of the Chinese ones where I did the tube mod which injects the fuel from the bottom up. It's a very convenient feature for the field because it means that you're not contaminating your catalyst. You can also then attach the head more firmly. You can see there's no wet naphtha there. And that one is going to sit upright as well. I may grab a couple more after they've been sitting for a while. you can ignite them. There are preferred methods for ignition and I prefer electronic ignition such as a USB lighter rather than an open flame. Again helps preserve the catalyst from getting burnt or contaminated. A lot of people ruin their catalysts by applying open flame directly to the catalyst. Not recommended. So we're going to get these lit up and then run a few tests. You light the S Boston by holding down the trigger 
on the side of it which is spring loaded and you may not be able to see that but there's a filament inside which then glows and that's all you need in order to get your exothermic reaction started. Off the bat one of the nice things about the S Boston is you don't need a rack in order to stand it upright. It stands up by itself nicely whereas the Zippo doesn't do that and if I want the Zippo to be sitting upright I need a rack for it. So we'll score one plus for the S Boston on that one. I generally prefer to use a USB lighter to do ignition for anything from hand warmers to stoves when I'm out in a cold environment outside in the backcountry. The USB are wind resistant, they have moisture resistant and uh, they don't run out of fuel, they can run out of charge. I just keep mine charged all the time. When I return from a trip, when I go out the door, it's ready to go and it's more than ample to last me for a multi-day backcountry trip. So you just get it close to the head and that amount of heat if your vapors are coming into the head will be enough to light it and if it's not then set it aside and let it have more chance to evaporate. Some of your other options for lighting if you do need an open flame is don't touch the catalyst. Again I like a lighter which I don't have First of all, the piezo ignition are not the best, especially for altitude or moisture. Um, with this particular one, I can use my finger to activate, so I can... And that's a turbo flame. Again, you just get it close. And the good thing about the turbo flame is with a gloved hand or something. If I break that beam in there, it lights. And then, for just my nice go-to all-round lighter, I do like this guy. It's pretty simple. It also runs on butane been pretty reliable for me. I carry it in my pocket when I'm in the backcountry and if I'm at one of the backcountry locations where we have to write light propane lights in one of our patrol cabins it's very nice and handy to carry around and it's been reliable. I wouldn't uh, take it above 10,000 feet but otherwise. So the S Boston is starting to warm up so we do have the exothermic reaction starting. I'm going to give it 5 or 10 to get up to heat and then we'll start running some temperature tests. And we are going to do that again um, using a probe. Uh, using an infrared is not my favorite method because they work upon reflection off the metal which is not very accurate. So it doesn't also emulate what you'd be looking at when something's in your pocket. So because she who must be obeyed doesn't know what a meat thermometer is for, apparently, I have free access to this and I can use it for my hand warmer experiments. So what I'm going to do to try and get a more accurate reflection of the proper temperature is rather than the infrared which I know is easier I've come up with this red-green method of measuring the temperature which involves she who must be obeyed's meat thermometer and a carbon felt blanket and what I plan to do is place the hand warmer in on top of 
the probe and then let it get up to its temperature the carbon felt should allow enough oxygen flow to emulate your pocket as long as you're not wearing rain gear with it includes the oxygen and you can see here the temperature moving up to the point where you might be able to cook your lunch in your pocket with this hand warmer as long as it's uh, medium rare so let's give it a chance to move here and see where it can get to after about 10 or 15 minutes we see this one has reached 135. I probably should point out too that um, I placed new catalysts in both the other Chinese and Zippo hand warmers. This S Boston is about a year old so it's not a completely tit for tat. Also the S Boston is using the original catalyst that came in it so I'm considering seeing if I can replace the catalyst with uh, our own material and see if that makes any difference. So now I am going to remove the S Boston. It's pretty hot. And we will stick the Zippo in there. And see where that gets us. So we'll give that a few minutes and see where it goes for temperature. The Zipto kept dropping off until it's reached where it is now. It seems to have stabilized out at around 111. So now we're going to take it out and we're going to throw the Chinese butterfly in there. <clears throat> and we'll see how that one compares to the other two. So the circular Chinese butterfly has shot right up to 133 and then stabilized out around that temperature. So now I'm going to replace the catalyst in the S Boston and see if there's any differences that way. Uh, one of the things too I should point out in the meantime was the differences. The Zippo has not got a carbon felt strip at the top of the reservoir. There is a slight bit of charring on the cot but not much. These other two, the S Boston and this Chinese butterfly, they both have the carbon felt strip applied to the top of the reservoir. That may or may not be making a difference, but I thought I should point out that the tests do have some anomalies between the benchmarks that we're using. So now I have pulled the catalyst bulkhead out of the S Boston and in order to see the details on how I've done that you can refer to the previous video I made on modern hand warmer maintenance and go from there I won't repeat it here. Now that it's out I see that the catalyst that's in there is approximately these squares are one inch so we're looking at about seven eighths of an inch for length and about a half an inch width on the catalyst. These pads that we have are roughly one and a half by one and a half so I will cut a piece that is approximately the same size as that and then put it in there and see how that goes and this then 
will illustrate if you go to Amazon and read a lot of the reviews about the S Boston some of them are pretty silly um, and some of them are very accurate and the one thing to note is where it claims you cannot replace the catalysts in these that is not true if uh, you have any sort of ability to just pull something with a pair of Nino nose pliers and then do something with a pair of tweezers and cut some catalysts with a pair of scissors then it's well within the realm of possibility to replace the catalyst in the S Boston. So I pulled out a piece of spare that I had around and I'm going to cut it to about one inch. And then I'm going to take it and just stuff it into your dexterity is probably better than mine. You can just take your piece because the catalyst does compact. You can experiment, but out of one of the pads, you should be able to get three rebuilds. So I used a, a little bit extra. I'm trying to see if I can increase the performance on this. So, after a bit of plumping, <clears throat> I know um, <clears throat> she must be obeyed, used to wonder why her eyes would always get so itchy after uh, she plucked her eyebrows with the tweezers. So I, I advise you get your own pair of tweezers. Uh, getting platinum catalyst in your spouse's eyebrows will not be the best strategy for a successful and ongoing marriage. There, I am now going to put that back into the head and then try and see if that makes any difference on the temperature. And remember, Look for where the filament is. The catalyst goes onto the same side as where the filament is. And because I have straightened out the little tabs in there, I angle it in so I can get it under the tab that I did not flatten out. Oops, and uh, I just pushed the catalyst back out so now if you do end up doing that you have to take it out again and repack it. So I did that on purpose just so you could see what you need to do if you kind of are a bit clumsy, awkward, incompetent and not too bright which well describes me but not many others. All right, I'm going to stick that back in again and then light it up and see how it goes. This time I'm going to put it in without you watching me because uh, I never do well when someone's watching me. I ended up flattening it down on this side too so that it wouldn't be touching <coughs> Excuse me, the carbon felt. And then, <laughs> I think going forward, 
Next time I do an S Boston, I will flatten the punch out tab that's on the rubber side so that when I'm pushing back down, I'm not pushing on the part where the catalyst is and possibly punching through the catalyst like I did last time. So I got it in by putting my needle nose pliers and just pushing down on the end of the bulkhead there. And now that seems to be seated in there. I'm going to put that back together. <coughs> I'm not going to add any more fuel. And hang on to your old catalyst for the next rebuild. I'm going to keep my old S Boston catalyst as it looks quite a bit different. It'll be interesting to see now what the differences are. I'm going to let this, if you want to hurry up the evaporation process, one little trick you can do if you're using a flame base lighter is warm up your reservoir. That gets the evaporation going a little quicker. And that's a trick that my friend Jeff Hanna, a fishing guide, relayed to me. Well, I guess really you couldn't say I don't have any friends, so uh, I like to think of Jeff as a friend, but I don't know if he reciprocates. I'm just someone he puts up with, probably. So we'll give this a bit, and we will see what happens if I can get it lit again. As I push this down, I'm seeing the filament glow. By the way, <clears throat> some other Amazon criticisms are that once you break your battery case or something fails with the electronics in your S Boston it is unusable but once again these things are all generic they all work on the same principles and if you take away the electronic ignition from an S Boston you still have a hand warmer that has all the functional components of all the other generic hand warmers and that would mean simply that you could create ignition by lighting through that hole right there uh, just by putting your flame in that way and you don't require in fact if you're out in the bush and your batteries suddenly go dead on you you could use your backup lighter <coughs> to ignite your your s boston so all is not lost i am uh, starting to feel heat there already so i'm going to give this some time to get going and warmed up and come back and assess whether we have given ourselves a disadvantage by replacing the catalyst or not. However, as you can see, it should be possible to replace catalyst on an S Boston because these do go after time. This one does look pretty durable, but they won't last forever. And the S Boston, if it's cared for, should last for quite a long time. So back now. To our former methodology and then we're going to leave that for a while and see how we fare with the temperature coming up. I'm going to go off and make a latte and warm up a croissant with some yogurt and jam in it. See we're getting the temperature starting to rise up there now. I could just leave this going and then when I edit the video put it on fast forward but 
you're just going to have to take my word that I'm an honest sort of guy. So I went off and had my latte and then I uh, thought I would check Facebook see if I actually had any friends but no one has signed up so I came back and the results are quite interesting I'm seeing 133 here with the new catalyst that we put in which matches what I got from that guy also that had the new catalyst put in and so the consistencies between these two units are the same catalyst now they both have a carbon felt strip put in at the top of the cotton they're both using the same naphtha which is somewhere between five and ten years old and because I've read that the S Boston's can get up to 167 I am wondering if the limiting factor in topping out our temperatures in this test is the old naphtha so I can't prove that until I perhaps run off and buy some brand new naphtha and then try again but in the meantime the Zippo is still warm but I can hold that one without having to flinch or let go whereas this one at 133 is too hot to hang on to so I'm not sure if for the Zippo it comes down to the design the size of the head or the fact that it has no carbon felt but as you can see there that's the one that's got the cotton in the top so we are going to wrap that one up and come to the conclusion so what turns out to be the best hand warmer I'd say it's the one that's in your warm in your pocket up when you're outside and it continues to work my personal favorites are I like to wear the circular butterfly around my neck under my jacket <coughs> with these cases are good for doing that they're a nice art form factor and uh, it doesn't go out that way <coughs> these are getting hard to find now I was unable to find stock for the 2017 2018 season so far and those weigh for the gram weenies out there 112 grams the next the S Boston comes in at 104 grams 8 grams lighter and then the Zippo comes in at 82 grams by the weight difference well you've got the batteries in there if you took the batteries out I suspect you'd come in around 80 grams on that one as well in fact here is a couple of triple E's I've got sitting here and those are 28 grams so if you duck, deduct 28 grams from the S Boston you're down to 80 so it's about the same as the Zippo if you remove the batteries that pretty much concludes the S Boston review I think what we take away from this is that you can replace the catalyst if you end up getting one and by the way somebody else <coughs> voiced their angst that when they looked into the battery compartment they had no way to know 
which way was negative and which way was positive. Well, because that's a filament, it doesn't matter. You can't reverse polarity because it's working on resistance. You pass a current through the filament, like the old Edison light bulb, and because of all the resistance it presents, it glows red hot. It doesn't matter which direction it's going. Current flows from one direction to the other, depending on where positive and negative is. Just put the batteries in so that they're opposing each other. In other words, that they're in series, not in parallel. But also, you can see that it's pretty obvious that that little nipple that's on the battery tab will connect better with the flat end of that battery and therefore is your signal. So you don't really need to have the polarity written on your hand warmer like some Muppet on Amazon complained about. So that's it. Thanks for watching and uh, if you learned anything today, remember don't use your spouse's tweezers for replacing your catalyst. Get your own tools and maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to stay off of her dining room table while you're doing it. This is Ron Tessellini. Um, Mr. Tessellini, would you like to explain what you're doing right now? God only knows. <laughs> trying to have a shower. We're taking water from Bryant Creek. We've never done this before. Larry Gilmore. Over 60 years of combined experience between these two gentlemen, and they've never done it before. Okay, here we go. Get a few we have to sign off now.